That was the homie hood diesel. How you know? That's the homie hood diesel. How you know? Cause that's the homie. Hey, you already know what it is, man. Rapping that BSO. I ain't. I, I, is, hey, what? Hey, is, hey, what? It, uh, it, it's a wino that live right in my hood that talk like that to me, and I understand <laughs> everything he's saying. Shout out to everybody from Rich Bahai's tuning in. Rich Bahai, P. Ryan, Goose, Florida City, Homestead, Coconut Grove, South Miami. Everybody on that US one line. Hey, I'm doing this for y'all too. Not really though, but like a little bit for y'all. I'm tired of having y'all wait, so I'm just gonna bring my little homie out. Y'all know who he is. Without any further ado, he on his way, but he's here already. So he ain't even on Ice his way. Ice and he was on time. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Coach for keeping this boy on the time all day, all day. You already know. Sure. So, Yo, <laughs> he said we got a show. So look, tell them people that don't know who you is and can't read at the bottom. Right there, what that said at the bottom. Tell them who you is. Ice Big and Berg. You know, I represent Live House. I, ultimately, I represent Dade County. You already know I'm holding it down for the crib. And, you know, and they should be familiar if they ain't. Why should they be familiar with you? Like, what What made you be familiar? Get them, like, a quick bio. Because I don't... I done did shows in everybody hood who watching, especially if it go from Key West to Deerfield and Pompa. No, I done, I done tore that up ten times over. So they should know. If they don't, they cousin or they girlfriend, though. Ooh. Nah, ooh. nah, that, that ain't no ooh. diss I'm saying for real. For kill a fact. Em. Ooh, kill em. Nah, ooh. no diss. Kill they know. Ooh, I hope my girlfriend don't know this boy. Ooh, nah, kill your em. girl got to know. No disrespect. Let me tell you Hey, do not know. I'm gonna tell you who you not know. No, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is like my little brother, man. Ice Billion Bird, man. I done known you since you was like 16. Yeah, most The definitely. original Dunk Riders was yeah. like about 11 of us. Yeah. And it just kept getting cut. Yeah, you remember that? We yeah. did the um, we did the Dunk Rider Try that Audio Vision. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and then where was that? Audio Vision. Audio Vision Studios. Yo, yeah. Dixie, right there. We had did um, what's the that was my first time ever seeing a trick, matter of fact. You know? yeah. But not, but yeah, like personally and stuff. Yeah. So now, how did you even get into that circle, right there? I, I um, I think Trick had heard my um mixtapes, cause I was putting my mixtapes out in um New Orleans, the the New Orleans and Carrot City High, mm -hmm. and it's like flooded from the schools and stuff, and then. Then, yeah, all that, it'll rise to power. He, he know damage is done. That was the first rise to power. I, I just put out a mixtape called Rise to Power last year, but I had a rise to power part one and part two. Yeah. And I had a damage is done prior to this one I put out. And and I um, was putting them out, and he got a whole lot uh, through one of his brothers down south through my daddy and stuff like that. Yeah. And he heard that boy spitting. He heard the young boy spitting, talking his life. Yeah. And you know, yeah, the, yeah, the, you know, yeah, to hit your boy up. Yeah, and you, I can say from the very beginning, you've been a mouthpiece for that age bracket because you was like 15, 16, 17 at that age range. Yeah. And it's just like, they ain't even had to gravitate to you. Like, what made them love bird? Like, what is, what is it a wrestling? Because I was just, nah, I was just doing me. You know, either you're going to love me or leave me alone. So it's like. If you don't love me as somebody out, if I'm being myself, it's somebody that's going to, it's somebody that's going to feel it. You know yeah. what I mean? I could say, you know, I, I, I could say something like, um, you know, I'm, I'm the, I'm the brokest dude since such and such. It's somebody out there been the brokest dude since such yeah. and such. You know, I ain't got to say that, you know, I got a Lambo and I got the $10,000 kilo and all that because, yeah. You know, whatever I rap about is somebody that's gonna relate to it, and that's how I walk. That's how um, that's how I format my music. You know, I just tell the truth, mm -hmm. and it's somebody out there gonna gravitate to it. Even even if you don't, it's somebody that do that's gonna make you feel it. So now, let's take that bird at that point, right there. Okay, you was just like doing mixtapes. Now let's go like an hour before that. What was you doing right before all that? Was you playing basketball? Nah, uh, I actually dog. The thing about it is, I was actually playing football. But I always told my old boy I ain't want to play football like that yeah. wasn't me. 
And he wrote my first rap when I was in um in kindergarten, man. I, I was uh, in kindergarten, yeah, man. Well, you giving me some history. I ain't know. Yeah, that see, he wrote know. my yeah he wrote my first rap when I was in kindergarten, and he always like he didn't want me to play football, but he encouraged me to play football because that is still teamwork and toughness in me. Yeah. You know, but I always told him, man, I don't want to do that. I want to rap. You know, like I said on the field documentary, yeah. I was saying like, man, um. I ain't got time to be out there sweating, man. I looked up to the person that betted on the football games. You yeah. know what I mean? I always idolized the hustler. And um, I think that's where it grew from. So now, we're going to put that on pause. To the caller, uh, where, who is this? Hello? Yeah, you on? Uh, Yawn. Yawn, where you calling from, caller? From High Lake. Oh, high live, boy. We got a lot of high lives over there, man. What's on your mind, brother? Uh, I want to request K-Man Curtis. Man, who paid you to call up here, man? <laughs> Don't be interrupting my <laughs> interview to be calling up. Because you know, you know, they done text you. No, nah, I'm just joking. We're going to get into that. We're going to try to get that for you, man. Anything else you want to uh, own? You live on the air right now, and, uh, and we interviewing Iceberg. So I want you to uh, like come up with a hot question right quick. Again, that boy getting coached, man. There's somebody coaching them in the background. All right, we got we got to get back to this interview because yeah, we've been waiting that, on this. That was basically it. So, so now the football situation came into play, yeah. and after the football play, and shouts out to the old boy, man, because he really been riding all yeah, the way from the beginning. Yeah, he gave me my own freedom to do whatever I wanted to do. You know, I he the original of, iceberg. Now I didn't know he was like. I, yeah. So now I don't even right. really believe you now. Nah, I feel like he's still he, right in he your verses though. But actually, how it really, really started with music, it <laughs> wasn't even rap music. He bought me a DJ set, and I started oh. off with DJ. And um, it was one Christmas because I had them almost everything that a, a little boy could want. I had dirt bikes, I had um go cars, chains, you know all that. Yo. He bought me a DJ set. He always bought me stuff that I could utilize that'll better me. He bought me a DJ set and I started, he had just dropped me off the parties. I was like six, seven years old DJing parties. Yeah. And I always just had a passion for music though. And I think that's where it came from, honestly. Yeah, I don't want to ask you nothing too far off, but I do got a personal question. Cause I always see you rep the father like, mama still here or? Yeah, 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 my, my old girl. Yeah, you well, she's just playing a lot. But, but yeah, she. Nah, yeah, because she, I've been watching you forever, and you. Yeah, really because know. I think it was all. I was always so close to my dad, you know, because um, I lived with my dad like almost like the. Well, I moved with my mom, but she was a young mom, so yeah. my dad took me in. And, you know, she was in the inner city, but yeah, okay. but they end up getting together when I was like in like this the fifth grade. Fifth grade, they end up getting married and stuff, and yeah. you know, he my manager and stuff like that. So you know, it's so close and. Nah, that, that's you know I feel like a father a, a lot of people don't have their dad so you know what I mean it's like yeah. um if 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 it's like almost to the point where it's like everybody nah, I ain't gonna say everybody got a mom because everybody don't got a mom but it yeah. was just he was just so much uh, of a father figure in my life he gave yeah. me like he gave me a lot of stepping stones to be great on yeah. and a lot of his friends I fed off their energy watching them because they was always the hustler you I, always say I that. always I, yeah. I always was around his friends you know I always looked up to what him and his friends did yeah. a lot of people look up to their mom sit around here their mom gossip about who got money in the hood but I was really around the dudes that had money in the hood you know yeah. what I mean yeah. so I always fed off that I'm like the hus I always tweet I'm the hustler's child you know they yeah. created a mom Monster. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that gave me the passion to want more. And I always just watch them boys handle their business and stuff. Now, I'm going to say this because I got to let Hunger get a couple questions there. But I do want to say this, man. And I do. Like, I, I'm the type of person I like telling people what I want to tell them face to face. I don't like texting. I don't like tweeting. I don't like phones. Like, one thing I like about you the most more than all the music is for one that you always salute your old boy man on everything and, and this it mean a lot to me because me and you got a lot in common that you don't even recognize but i'm gonna say this like this it mean a lot to me being that i don't have a father like my mom and daddy was on drugs so i lost my parents early yeah. so when i watch you display the way you display your affection verbally or like through 
your mannerisms or the respect that you have from a father, it mean a lot. I'm going to tell you two times as much I respect you more because I see you do it to your son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, your son and your relationship with your child, just like I tell him, he's the godfather of my son, yeah. right? This is my best friend. But a lot of times, us real fathers, we learn from other real fathers. It ain't just the fact that you buy your son you know all the new kicks and so on like you really have a real relationship yeah, with your I drop child him off to school every morning like yeah. a lot of people don't understand that how how much um how much that mean because i seen kids that grew up with their dad yeah. and his dad probably had money but his dad probably just dropped off a couple dollars and kept it moving yeah. but you know what i mean and and i could see the effect that it had on them when they got older but yeah. you know we wasn't the richest people yeah. but i i remember everything that this guy taught me you know what i mean yeah. and i just know how much that how much more important that is that these just really look like you them kids superhero at the end yeah. of the day you know what i mean it ain't like, nothing like that time. like like that like what you display is that's what that's what they gonna become honestly you know what yeah. i mean and that's and that's I, I don't know i just feel like it's the right thing to do a lot of people i whip up i meet a dude finna get some money from him or me you know me i i might have my son somewhere he ain't really supposed to be in the car and then oh boy you babysitting no i ain't babysitting i'm being a daddy this is my job this is my son you yeah, know what i mean say that and a lot of people like oh you get father of the year no i'm just doing what i'm supposed to do what you supposed to be doing yeah. man but then some people do really sit back and watch that man like really i appreciate yeah, they be that. amazed because it's like in the inner city we don't really get that you know and i i try to like yeah. it's like i was just talking about these guys um i was just talking about these guys that's like they a lot of these rappers got people growing up feeling like a lot of these rappers got people growing up feeling like it ain't even cool to have girlfriends you know it ain't even yeah, cool to have yeah, a girl yeah, a yeah, main yeah. lady you know what i mean yeah. And you, everybody in this room on this planet Earth came from a female. Yeah. So how you disrespecting women like the way you do? And you trying to go on about like you don't need no female when you that way. Well, if you a king, you gonna need a queen unless you want another king sitting beside you. Hey, ooh, you know what I mean? ooh. not on this show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you already know what it is, man. Grandma 101 TV, y'all stay locked in, man. We're not going. We'll be right back. We're going into this video right now with the homie Iceberg. Bet that. Yeah. Sitting high, still riding on big bricks. Still fly, still grinding, getting big checks. Still thugging, still leaning, 